In today's notes, we're going to take a look at measuring angles, our different types of angles that we have, and also constructing an angle congruent to a given angle. So in starting with measuring angles, the tool that we use, um, shown to the right here, is called a protractor. The protractor allows us to measure an angle. So let's take a look at the measure of angle DOC. So if you have a highlighter, I'd like you to highlight the angle D. Oh, see. Okay, this is the angle that we're going to look at. If you take a look at where the rays intersect the different points on the protractor, uh, we can make note of what uh, markings those are. Now, there are two sets of numbers on a protractor. So let's first start at this ray right here and take a look at these inner numbers. So we're going to go from here using the inner numbers over to here. So in using the numbers, um, the inner numbers closest to this vertex, let's write those numbers on the side. So we're right here in between 30 and 40, um, which is, let's actually use a different color. So right here is 45 degrees. I'm having a hard time looking at it on my page, but in looking here at zero in the inside, 10, 20, this is 45 degrees. It is hard to read. I apologize. And then over here, okay, continuing to count from this right side over to this side, this is 135 degrees. So we're going from 45 degrees to 135 degrees. So we need to find that difference. So to find the measure, we take the difference of 45 and subtract 135. But we note that it's the absolute value of that difference because when we measure an angle, it's always represented by a positive measurement. So that's equal to the absolute value of negative 90 or 90 degrees. The absolute value of negative 90 is 90. Now let's take a look at those outside numbers. So we're going to use these here. So right here, we're going 131, 20, the numbers are getting smaller. And as you know, okay, with this being 170, 160, 150, 140, this is going to be the opposite. This is the 135 this time. Counting down to this here being 45 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to take the absolute value of 135 minus 45, which is the absolute value of a positive 90, which is 90. So all this is is illustrating that when you take the absolute value, it doesn't matter the order in which you subtract or find the difference. You're still going to get the same answer. So the measure of angle DOC is a 90 degree angle. And we'll practice using the protractor down below for a couple angles um, in this table. So our different types of angles. An angle measure that is between 0 and 90 degrees, so it's larger than 0, but less than 90 degrees, as a 90 degree angle has a specific name, and that is a right angle. And that has a symbol, and you can always draw the symbol rather than write the word right angle. It's like the L with the box in it, okay? So a 90 degree angle has a specific name that's a right angle. So anything that's greater than zero and less than 90 is an acute angle. Okay? Moving up to greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 as its measure. Um, as a 180 degree angle is called a straight angle. Okay, um, this is an obtuse angle. So greater than 90 but less than 180 is an obtuse angle. And we're going to take a look at an example of measuring. But before we do, let's actually take out the tool and give some exact measurements for the acute angle and the obtuse angle. So take your protractor math tools 
and you take, um, whoops, this board one is a little challenging to use, but I'll do my best. So you want to take and put this um, T part of the compass right here at your vertex, and do your best to line up. And what I mean by that, see if I can use a highlighter. Nope, can't use a highlighter over the top. So um, you want to take and line that line up with your ray. So the angle here, if I make a line tool, use draw a line over the top. Can I do that? Nope, so let's actually take and extend these. Okay, so before I can actually um, utilize that, so I'm gonna use this light blue. You really need to extend, I said I thought it was gonna be light blue. Oh, I gotta change it up here. Maybe is that green now? No, it's still orange. It's gonna be orange, it wants to be orange. So take and extend the rays of your angle. So you can see better on the protractor where it's intersecting. So then take, and you wanna line up, some of the compasses actually have a little circle there, but I wanna put that part of the compass there and try to align it nicely so that it lays at zero or 180, depending on what numbers you like to use, but I like to use zero from one of my rays. It's as close as I'm gonna get it. Um, I'll use light blue. So we're right here at zero, okay? And then I'm gonna look up to where it intersects here, and that looks to be at exactly 35 degrees. And I could be slightly off with this board compass. So if you have anything, say, 34 degrees or 36 degrees, um, that should be good. And that makes sense for the acute angle. So here, x is equal to 35 degrees. Now I'm gonna extend the rays of the obtuse angle just to practice measuring. Bring my protractor over. Put it so that lines on zero. Okay, it's the best I can get it right now. And because I aligned it so, once again, this is zero, I'm following those inside numbers. So here's the zero degrees. I'm still counting from zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way over to here, which looks to be 120 degrees. And that 120 is um, between 90 and 180. Okay, so now that we actually have the tool here down on the piece of paper, let's actually just look at what numbers it intersects and then subtract. So find the measure of each angle, then classify it as acute right obtuse. So AOD is here, AOD, and I'm gonna look here at zero. So I'm counting zero all the way over to, and I'm gonna get rid of this line right here. So look closely, and you can see that the measure, I'm just gonna put a little M in front, the measure of AOD is equal to 165 degrees. And since that is greater than 90, but less than 180, that is an obtuse angle. Next one, BOA. A is right here at zero again, so that's very nice. So counting here at zero, we're gonna stop. And zero is actually, oh, I, I'm not using the tool. So I can actually make my line, and we're going from here to here. So take a moment and read on your paper. And that number right here is 40 degrees. And 40 degrees is greater than zero, but less than 90, so that's an acute angle. And then last for this example, let's use green, COD. And right here at the vertex, if you trace out, neither one of these rays that form the angle are on zero. So let's make note of this number and this number, so go ahead and write those numbers down. This number being 75, this one being 165. So to find the measure, 
go back and put the little M in. I actually need to subtract. So 165, and if you always subtract the smaller from the larger, you're gonna end up with a positive measurement. So that's 90 degrees, which again, it's not negative, which is what we want, that's fine, but the order in which you subtract doesn't matter because we're supposed to take the absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 90 would still be 90 degrees. Again, the measure of any angle is always a positive measurement. So this is 90 degrees, which is specifically, let's actually use the symbol. If you don't like to write the words in math, we can use the symbol. It's a right angle. Good. Next page. We have some vocab terms here. So we're gonna note the symbol and write the definition and then mark some things in the pictures to the right. A congruent angle. Okay, the symbol for congruency is the equal sign with the squiggle over the top or the tilde. Okay, so that's the symbol for congruent. And congruent angles are angles that have the same measure. You can use write the same or say equal measures. So over here we have, we have angle ABC, DEF, or CBA, uh, FED, or angle B, angle E. I like to personally note them with numbers. Okay, so I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That's the easiest way to do it is to label them with a number instead of writing out all three vertices. So angle addition. Okay, what this means is, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call these angles over here, angle one and angle two. If I didn't have the second angle, my picture would be this, just angle one, which is angle SQR, RQS. If I add, so I'm gonna take my eraser, if I add angle two to my diagram, Okay, if I slide along so that they share the same vertice, if I add to that, I now have this larger angle, which is PQR, or angle RQP. Okay, so angle addition just states that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle RQP. The sum is equal, or the sum of the parts is equal to the whole or the whole is equal to the sum of the parts, okay? However you want to write it. But what's important about that is if we look at this ray here, okay? This point S has to be in the interior of angle RQP in order to have the ray QS. So we're gonna start by saying if, um, S is in the interior, of angle RQP, then the measure of angle, I'm just going to follow along, this is RQS plus the measure of angle PQS, and sharing that ray QS, that's going to equal measure of angle RQP, the whole. And you can see what I mean by using numbers rather than the three vertices um, when naming angles. So this is again just saying that the whole equals the sum of the parts. This is the same for segment addition, okay? Now an angle bisector, okay, is a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a ray. It could be a line segment, uh, could be a line, okay? So over here, JK is that ray, this is the angle bisector. So I'm going to number them one and two again. Angle one is congruent to angle two. Okay? Or their measures would be the same. So if angle one, 
that's an acute angle, let's say it's 80 degrees, this would also be 80 degrees. They have equal measures. Okay, so now let's take a look at some examples. It's always good to draw a picture. So I'm going to start in number two. It says the measure of angle ABD is 37 degrees and the measure of ABC is 84 degrees. Find um, angle DBC. So how do we know how to put this together? So ABD and ABC, D being the common letter. So that means D is in the interior. So let's draw A, B, C to start. And then draw, here's D. So A, B, C, here's the ray, D. It says that A, B, D is 37. A, B, C, the whole, so from here all the way over to this ray, is 84 degrees. Find the measure of D, B, C. So that's x. So we know that x plus 37 is equal to 84. You can also just tell me that x is equal to 84 minus 37, however you want to set it up. But that difference, okay, when I subtract 37 from 84, we get uh, 47 degrees. So 47 degrees is equal to, I don't want to call it x, I'm going to go back to my original problem, the measure of angle D, B, C. Number three. That actually tells us T is in the interior. So this helps a lot in our picture. So as we start with PQR, and T is in the interior. Okay, so now let's draw the ray. We know it's going to be an angle addition problem. It says find the measure of PQR, which is the whole. If RQT is 5x, and PQT is 4x plus 6. Oh, and it does tell me that the whole, algebraically, is 10x minus 7. So we know that the sum of the parts is equal to the whole. So one part, 4x plus 6, plus 5x equals 10x minus 7. 4x and 5x is 9x plus 6 equals 10x minus 7. So go ahead and solve that equation. And we get x is 13. However, it wants the measure of PQR. If it doesn't say it wants the measure in terms of a variable, which in this case would be x, I need to find its numerical value. So here, the whole was 10x minus 7. So 10 times 13 minus 7, well, 13 times 10 is 130, minus 7 is 123 degrees. Equals the measure of angle PQR. Last one. This time we have an angle bisector. So start by drawing angle ABC. And BD is the bisector. I'll use a different color. And I'm going to try to actually draw it. Nothing ever has to be drawn to scale. But I'm actually going to try to draw it or draw it so that I think this angle here is the same size as that one. So ABD, it says this one is 6x plus 3, algebraically. And DBC is 8x minus 7. And then we're going to find the measure of angle ABD, which is this angle right here. What I know, because this was a bisector, is that the angles are congruent. So the measures, algebraically, are equal. So 6x plus 3 equals 8x minus 7. So take a minute and solve that equation. I always like to subtract the smaller number of x's from the larger. So I have a positive, but it doesn't always have to be solved that way. Okay, I have x equals 5. To find the measure of ABD, I have to plug it in, again in yellow, right here. So 6 times 5 plus 3 
order of op, 6 times 5, multiplication for addition is 30, 30 plus 3 is 33. So 33 degrees equals the measure of angle A, B, D. All right, the last page. Oh, this is fun, because this is a construction. Constructions are fun. So we have angle A, and we're going to construct angle S, so another angle that it is congruent. And look at here, we have the steps. So this is awesome. So gra grab your straight edge. Could be a ruler, could be an index card, and your compass. When I'm using the board, I tend to just try to, instead of using a straight edge because the tool is a pain in the butt to use, I tend to just hand draw um, my lines and my rays, anything that involves the straight edge. So draw a ray with point S. I'd like you to use your ruler so it's nice and straight, but I'm going to draw a ray with end point S. With the compass on point A, draw an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. So up here, compass point on A, draw an arc that extends both sides. Just like that. Label the points of intersection as B and C. This is just so we can easily communicate later how to do some other steps. Step three, with the same compass setting, put the compass point on S. So don't change anything, bring it down to S, and draw an arc, um, and label the point of intersection where the ray is R. So I'm gonna draw an arc, and label this as R. Okay. And step four, open, open the compass to the length of BC. So I'm going to bring the compass up. So we had the label BC. I now measure the width of the angle. All right, I'm going to use a different color to measure the width. So I'm going to come back, make the arc. And then keeping the same compass setting, put the compass on R. So come down here to R and then make the same compass setting. So now I can draw my ray through that point of intersection. So if you were to take your protractor and measure this angle here, CAB, from here to here would be the same as this angle here. This opening would be the same as that opening. So we're this time gonna go down here and finish by doing one that's not congruent, but one that is twice the size of angle B. So I'm going to start by drawing the ray, and we're constructing angle F, so I'm going to label this F. I need my compass. There we go. Put the vertex on B, and the first step is to just draw an arc so that it intersects both sides. So let's use purple. An arc here. And then bring it over to F and make the same size arc. And you want to bring it back more because we're going to do twice the size. Measure the width. How wide is this angle? So put your compass point on one of the points of intersection, pencil on the other, and then make an arc. So this is how wide it is. And you can bring it back. That's the width. So I need to do double. So, just to make note, this ray here matches up with this ray here. And this point of intersection here matches up with this one. So I'm going to take put my compass point down on this blue dot now. And if I make one arc, that's the same size, but I need to double it. So I'm going to slide my compass point up to here, and this would be twice the size. If I wanted third, I'd go up and do, do more, so on and so forth. But I only need twice as large. I'm going to get rid of that last arc. And then I finish by lining up my straight edge and then drawing the ray through. So say this angle here, I don't know, say it was 35 degrees. Double when I measure, so from here all the way over here, from here to here, this should be, if you use your protractor to check, 70 degrees.